Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about YOLO. You only look once by Ultralyctix. So in this case when we have a model that is doing detection of an image. So what we are trying to do is taking an image and figuring it out where can I find objects in this image and what objects are there. So let's say that you have a busy street and you want to figure out where are the cars in the street. Then you can use this detection model to actually create small boxes that tells us over there is a car in this image. So if we look over to my screen here, I have prepared and downloaded an ML train set and it's just a bunch of images and the labels for those images. So if you look in this directory here, we have a data YAML and this data YAML has the configuration for this file. So we have training, it's in the directory dot dot train images and val uh, for validation is in dot dot valid images. And these are in this directory. And the reason I have dot dot slash before is because I'm gonna create a directory where I'm gonna run this from because I'm gonna um, clone the YOLO uh, directory into this directory and then run it from there. We want to have five different labels and the label names should be ambulance, bus, car, motorcycle and truck. And if we go into one of these directories, for instance train, uh, they have the same similar layout all of these directories and they have one directory that is images that just has the images. So these are JPEG images that contain some information about cars, ambulances, bus or trucks. And in the labels directory we have similar files with the same name except the extension in this case is txt, so text. If we look at one of these files we can see that it has some data in it. First off we have this 2 and this corresponds to the data files labels. So if we look in, in that data file we can see that what we are looking at here is car. So 0, 1, 2, car. So the label of car should be in these coordinates. And what I thought when I looked at these coordinates I thought okay it's probably left top or left bottom depending on if you are doing the normal way of having coordinates or if you're starting from Origo. But in this case I thought it was left top for instance and then I wanted to say where is the right bottom so I, I put those coordinates in not the correct one. Then I had left top and then width and height not correct at all. So what they have chosen here is the coordinates to the center X and center Y with the width and height. And these are normalized uh, coordinates. So for instance, if you have an image of 400 and you want to point out the hundredth coordinate, so uh, 100 in, in the X coordinate for instance, then you just take 100 divided by 400. So you get 0.25. So that is your coordinates, those are normalized. So when we have done that, figured out which images to use and created text files with a bunch of labels in them, we're pretty much done in order to train a train data set. So if we go back to my root directory here, I will clone this uh, directory. So what we're looking at now is GitHub Ultralytics uh, YOLO v5. So I will clone that down. And in this directory, if we look, it has a model directory, some uh, segments, utils, data and classify. But it has this training script down here and that is what I'm gonna run later on. But first of all, we need a couple of requirements. And just so I don't do anything to my system here, I just want to install the packages for this, I will create a new Python environment. So I will run python3 m for module, the environment, and then environment. So it will create an environment for me. 
What more I, is required for this is that I actually have um, the drivers for my graphics card and, and a graphics card if you want to run that. Or you can run on CPU, it's a little bit slower. But um, we will activate this first. So let's activate the environment. We run source, environment, bin, and activate. And then I can reinstall these requirements. So pip install dash r, the requirements text up here. So that will install all the requirements. And what I need more is having a graphics card is a, an improvement. And then you need to install CUDA if you are running uh, NVIDIA uh, hardware. So you need the CUDA environment in order to run this system. So the graphics card, the graphics drivers, and the CUDA environment in order to run that graphics card. But after you have installed that in your system, then installing these requirements will set up everything else for you in this Python um, environment. So let's just wait for this to be installed. So after we install the environment uh, requirements here, we need also a model. So in this case, we want to use the YOLO v5 model. So that could be downloaded from GitHub. In the Git repository, you actually have links to all the models. In this case, I've chosen YOLO v5 uh, X PT. So that is the one model that I want to start my training from. So the training weights of that model is my starting point. Then I'm gonna train that. So I'm gonna run Python 3, train PI and then data, and then dot dot data yaml. That's the file that we looked at at the beginning of this video, where we actually said that where the images were located. And then we have the weights, and this is the Python, uh, this uh, weights that we start from, the model that we start from, that I just downloaded. And in that model has images that have uh, 640 pixels squared, um, in it, so that's what we are saying here that the model supports that to so continue to so start to run images of that size. But this framework doesn't care how your images actually look, it will rescale them and handle images of any ratio. And then we will run for 10 epochs, which means that it will look at all the images during training for 10 different iterations. So we'll go through all the images and then start over all the images 10 times. So that's the epochs and 10 epochs is very few. Um, but just to test the framework, we can start there, but usually we run hundreds or thousands epochs. And then you have a batch size of eight. That's because my graphics card only have 12 gigabytes of memory and it uses seven or eight gigabytes of memory with a batch height of eight. It uh, started with a batch size of 16, but then you need better hardware. And then we have the output name, uh, just output. So that's where it will put the data. So if we were run that, it will start a training process, uh, loading in the model and then starting loading each image and start training on it. And we can see here that we have 878 images and then we have a, a validation set of 250 images. Uh, so that's version five and we will look at the result later on, uh, but I will also compare it with version uh, eight, which is the latest one. So when we're starting with version eight, what we could do is clone this GitHub repository, the Ultralytics uh, repository and go in here and then run requirements and so on in here. We also need, of course, the model. So we will vget this YOLO V8 X model. But instead of running the requirements, I will actually create a new envir Python environment again, so I don't destroy anything in my system and install a bunch of packages that I won't use. I will ac activate that environment and then I will run pip install ultralytics. So that will give me the whole framework that we will run our training on. So, and it will give me a command line utility in order to run my training in this environment. So now that Ultralytics is installed, we can run the YOLO.detect command. 
And there is a bunch of other functionalities here. We can do YOLO classify and, and a bunch of other things as well. But in this case, we are doing detection algorithm. And we're gonna train it. And we want to run with the data YAML that we looked at earlier. So the same data. We want to run the model YOLO uh, V8 XPT. Uh, 10 epochs again, image size of 640 and a batch size of 8. So if we start that, it should load the model in and start training it on the um, weight that we put in. But instead of waiting for the training process, let's just look at the results. So if we switch over to my screen here, I actually have the YOLO version 5 here with the results of it. We can see that it found an ambulance and a car up here. We can see that it found an ambulance up here with 80% and then it found a car of, over here. And it found a bunch of cars over here, a car over here with nine uh, with ninety percent accuracy. It found an ambulance over here, ambulance and cars, motorcycle and so on. But if we switch over to V8, we can see that it's a little bit clearer. We don't get this car over here. We find an ambulance. We find an ambulance over here. We get the door as well. So it's a little bit better of actually figuring these ambulances out. And the cars here are similar to the other um, models. So it's not a huge improvement from the previous model, but we can see a slight improvement in version 8. And we can also say that this command of YOLO detect is a little bit more intuitive, a little bit easier to use, and the documentation is really good for version 8 as well. So I think Alteralexix has done a really good job on this YOLO algorithm. It is open source, it is available to run and so on. But sadly, I would say, in my opinion, it's tainted by the uh, AGPL license, so their SSO uh, GPL license, you know, public license. Which means, if I have understood it correctly, I'm not a lawyer, so I could be wrong here. But what I have understood is that you couldn't really connect it to any uh, non-open source software. So let's say you create a plugin for Word, uh, Microsoft Office Word, and run it through there. And you have a service that it connects to that runs this algorithm then because you are running this algorithm and it's a part of your service and you have a network connection to that service, then Microsoft Word would have to be open source and the show should be widely available, which I think is a little bit of an overstep and a very strange way of licensing things. I think GPL is really good. I think uh, MIT license is really good. I think there is a bunch of different, and Apache license is really good as well. I really like all of these different licenses, but I think AGPL is stepping over a little bit too far um, when it comes to being onerous. Um, but I could have misunderstood it. There could be an, um, an expla explanation and it could be less, um, uh, onerous. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, I've read it through and that is the understanding that I have. Other than that, I think this is a pretty good model. I think it's, it's uh, uh, solving an issue and I also think that you could use it to get pretty good accuracy when you're training it against your own data. So this was what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found it interesting. I hope that you want to play around with ML algorithms as well. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you have any comments or suggestions, <laughs> leave them down in the comment section down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.